Hey guys, Boomslang here. I wanted to bring you a PvP guide. Now, I'm not the best PvP in the world. This is not the best PvP setup. It's something for people to start with, improve upon, you know, learn more about the higher end meta builds. But I just wanted to give you a starting point. Now, I watched A Lesher's video this morning about the dagger pair. I've changed it up a little bit just for something that I wanted to do. But obviously, go and check Alesha's um, one-shot dagger pair guides. It will help you greatly. I'm just giving you a couple of variations, and then we'll go into some arenas. I'm not the best of, best at PvP. I'm not the best at arena. I can get a couple of kills here and there with the dagger pair. I'm just learning it. And I die quite a bit. So don't come and watch this if you want to be the best. I'm just giving you some tips, some help, and some general out of um, out of arena like ha what what to do in the open world kind of thing so obviously the food the different kind of potions that you should bring that sort of stuff so basically this is the dagger pair build and the reason I have tier 6 dagger pair in in my inventory is because I want to show you the other skills that it has so primarily these two here, Shadow's Edge and Chain Slash. Now I can't demonstrate them, but I'm just going to describe them. So I'll start with the Dagger Pair that I can use. I can go up to Tier 5, but there's no real difference between them except for an extra skill that I haven't even unlocked. So you have the Sunder Armor and you have the Assassin Spirit. Both of them generate the three stacks um, that, you know, benefit the main skill. So Sunder Armor you keep attacking and attacking and it builds up over time um, and it's obviously once you've got a person selected you keep pressing Q and it builds up your stacks but there is a 1.9 second cooldown. So the next one is the Assassin Spirit so you activate it and it will keep every three seconds building a stack that increases your damage by 6% and that stacks up to three times and then if you don't use it the stacks will drop so you toggle it on and it starts building until you get the three little daggers around you and that's you at your max damage potential from that skill and as you can see it's about to drop off and it drops off now so you've got a few rotations of it before it's gone and then you have to use it again but obviously it's fairly quick for it to come back up so and if you press Q it cancels it so remember not to keep pressing Q it's purely a toggle on and that's it get your three up and then get ready for the combo which I'll describe now you have throwing blades which not a lot of people use you have the dash which most people use to engage and disengage and then you have the forbidden stab which reduces healing so it depends on what kind of comp you're in, but if you're just doing this solo or a solo arena, solo world PvP, I just recommend to have the dash. It will help you out a lot. Now, the slit throat, this is where the Q comes into play with the three stacks. Because as you can see, you get three charges, it's 1195, and it's a lot of damage to output on somebody when, um, when you introduce the other items that I have. Now I haven't found it to be a one-shot build in arenas because obviously you've got healers, they've got mitigation, they've got damage reduction, they've got all sorts of different spells and things that happen. But if you were soloing and you knew how to play the dagger pair and the items that I'm using or a different variation, it's a, it's a very strong build. Um, obviously there are other weapons that you can use but it's totally up to you. Then we have Deep Cuts which inflicts the bleed every four normal attacks. Life Leech if you want to give that bit of sustain and the attack speed every six normal attacks you gain 30% extra attack speed for three seconds. So it's totally up to you which one but generally it's Deep Cuts. Then we've got the Adept's Royal Hood now I've taken this because you can pair it with the Q. So I normally wait until I've got two stacks up. And then I would press D. 
and then by the time this is about to drop, so this is on its last drop now, you're up to the six stack. It kind of overlaps a bit. So I've waited for two. You could technically maybe wait until one is up and then press it now, and then you'll have them both in conjunction because there's not a lot of time for this before it drops. And what does it do? It increases your um, damage by 8% per second. Um, and it stacks up to six times. So you couple that with the Q, you know, you're getting a really high damage buff there. And I've gone with the all cooldown times reduced, but there is attack speed and there is um, your damage and heal increased by a percentage and incoming damage reduced. Then there's energy regain to replenish energy. You're not going to need that. How that's more if you're in a group party and you need some CC. Um, you know, it will slow enemies, so that's more for a group event. But you could use it instead of having that extra damage. It's totally up to you. So this is the assassin jacket. It's one of the main parts of the build because you turn invisible for eight seconds and your first attack out of invisibility will have increased damage and the longer you stay invisible the higher the damage buff up to a maximum of 40% so it's really useful really handy to then increase again your damage Inferno Shield it's nice reflects magic or 30% of the damage incoming before armor and magic resistance but you know that's not what we're going to use and then Mend Wounds you'd only be able to use that if you were able to escape and you know, um, trick the enemy as to where you're going so they think you're going west but you're going east you might be able to get away with using that um, attack speed or increase damage and increase uh, reduce damage incoming so I've gone with attack speed because obviously the more attacks I get in with all the buffs going the better Hellion Boots I'm kind of deciding whether I keep Mark of Sacrifice. So basically you put a Mark of Sacrifice onto an enemy or onto a friendly unit and after two seconds you dash to the Mark target and your damage is increased by 35% again. Um, obviously you can cancel at any time and it will move you from the current position that you're at towards that person, be it friendly or an enemy. Now you can see where I'm going more percent damage increase but obviously you're kind of leaving yourself at the mercy of whatever happens in combat because there's no way for you to get away apart from your dash so do you have that in increased extra damage or do you have the run speed two different variations it's totally up to you um, carry maximum load not needed increase damage reduce damage again and then attack speed and then I've gone for the cooldown reduced time so that my skills are up more often. Undead Cape, reason being, it activates when, you're dam when you take damage and your health is below 25%, turns you invisible for 6 seconds. Um, you can still use abilities while you're invisible, but the damage and healing power is reduced by 50%. So you're just basically trying to get away at this point. You're not trying to do any more damage because you're reduced by 50% and bag totally up to you mount totally up to you if it's arena mounts don't count um, I think in arenas food doesn't matter because it would kind of be a waste so food and potions don't matter in arena it's more for world PvP now any stew that increases your damage so that could be used for um, the dagger pair build in world PvP and the omelet would be used primarily for the um, spell casting builds and that's in open world as well. Now why have I got another dagger pair here? So Shadow's Edge, this is for when you get to higher levels. You throw a uh, knife in front of you, if it hits the enemy, the enemy will be stunned for just under three seconds and you will be pulled behind the enemy. So this is like a catch up to somebody. It's very useful and it helps, you know, for you to get a good gank off in open world PvP. Not so much required in arenas. Could be useful, could could not be. Because obviously the dash, it, 
maybe I, I to be honest I think it probably would be better in arenas anyway versus the dash because that's a the dash is used for escape so you could maybe drop um, drop the mark of sacrifice and take one of the increased speeds and that way you do still have an escape so totally up to you if you're up to this level and then chain slash quickly slash through multiple enemies and you continue jumping to the closest enemy up to an 8 meter radius for up to 4 times dealing 341 physical damage to each enemy while you're slashing through the enemies you're invisible to players cannot be hit so it's really good if you're solo ganking two, two players or if you're jumping into a, a clap in arenas so have a think about that one is this what you want to get into keep building up your dagger pair it's really good and so far it's been pretty fun in arenas I'm still still learning like I say okay guys so this is the arena we're in it 5v5 um, I went solo so these are just random people generally everybody goes to the bottom um, point here and we just start getting into combat so I'm going to charge up my build because I'm going to try and jump somebody at the back and I kind of messed that up a little bit but I think I got some nice damage on that guy before he went in viz yeah I don't know if that was all me but he's quite low so focusing the healer now I uh, couldn't get enough on him. Damn it! No, that's not what I wanted! So that was the F right there. But of course you have to be uh, careful. Um, yeah, I kind of messed up with the F. I didn't mean to do that. But you can see what the build is about. You know, you want to basically charge your stacks, get your D going, get your F on them, potentially R as well and just get your E off and then get out again it's just about hitting and running, hitting and running so I'm going to try and go I think I've effed on the wrong person which is fine so on to the healer so there you go, that was a nice large stack there so I'm just going to focus on the healer and that way he's kind of out of the fight now because he's going to have to heal himself or die one of the two um, like I say, I am not the best, far from it, so don't just think that anything that I'm doing is what you should be doing, because it really isn't. And I managed to take out that healer. Now I'm going to try and take out this guy. He's just gone invisible, probably still running this way or staying in the center. So try and get big damage on him. He's gone in Viz again. He might be duking me going back. Just trying to work out where he is. I think he left. I don't know where he's gone. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we're trying to do. Is clear the points and then cap them. If you can have one person going off and capping, it's fantastic. But it does leave you a man down. So at the moment, we're a man down and they're all pushing in on us. So at the moment I'm just waiting for my stacks to come back up and I'm going to have to probably refresh it like now. Go on in Viz. Damage off on him wasn't quite enough. That guy's got plate on. And I didn't take him out, but I helped towards it um, and helped my team out. So, you know, it is it is a build that you can use and it is effective. I mean, that this is solo now. And that guy, I took him from near enough full life down to not much. And it's just now dependent on if I have the ability to finish him off and I missed my... oh come on, yes, right there we go so I fucked that up royally but the point is in my hands somebody that's not good with it I can still kill someone 1v1 so give it a shot guys, let me know what you think 
I just need to cap this, go back and help him, and we've won. I just need to cap this. Come on, come on, come on. Damn it, they capped it. Okay, so we need to. I need to cap this, and then I need to get down to the bottom, and we need to win that fight. Come on, please don't jump in. Yes, right. Ignore him. Go and viz. Just keep moving. They are not important. The important part is down here. And he left at the wrong time. And I got him. Right, he's gone. Healer down. Although he was really low anyway. I shouldn't be focusing the plate. That's who I want there. Mr. Grey Warg. Come on. And I don't think that was enough. And we have nearly done it. Yes! There you go, boys. Oh, that was hard work. But that is what you receive for a win per day. And I didn't look at my stats, damn it. So, that's the build, guys. That's it in action. That's my first arena win. I'd never had one before this. And it works. It's a really cool build. It's really useful. And even someone like me that hasn't really played, um, I picked it up and I, I managed to kill people. I managed to be effective. I managed to, you know, get stuff done. Good times. Right. Please check out the discount codes. Please check out the links below. I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Boom slang out. Have a good one all.